Good day, everyone. I'm teacher Alan Ray Embelesar, U.S. School Publication Advisor from KPN National High School. And I'll be sharing to you my insights about copy editing or copy reading and headline writing. Now, before I start, I would like to share to you that of all the categories that I had uh, been through, I guess the, my most favorite is copy editing and headline writing because of all the categories, I like its objectivity. What do you mean by that? Uh, in practicing or in training you to become good copy editors and head and writers, you, you will be able to use some reviewers. And what are those reviewers? Definitely the newspapers. Unlike with the other categories that is quite subjective, what I like about with copy editing and head and writing is that we learn something from our reviewers. And whenever we love to read newspapers, definitely, and news articles as well, definitely, you may be able to learn a lot with regard to copy editing and head and writing. So at this point, let's start our learning. Now, here are the things that we'll be learning for today's session. You'll be learning your duties as a copy reader, the symbols, the common symbols that we commonly use or we usually use whenever we are editing. The copy reader's concerns as well. What are the things that we need to edit? And of course, the second part has something to do with head and writing. We'll also be learning head and vocabulary and the types of headlines and of course tips on how to write an effective headline please be reminded that copy editing and head and writing is like two categories in one category so as if you will be learning two categories right away that's why uh this category is a little bit challenging but interesting as well so let's start our discussion with learning how or what your duties are is that clear now, the first duty of a copy reader is to edit the newspaper copy whose work is all about improving. And definitely, you have to improve the version of the text. You have to improve the quality of writing so that it will become effective and efficient to the readers. So that it would well inform the readers about something. Is that clear? Next, you need to edit the copies for spelling, grammar, usage, and punctuations. And these are the basic mechanics in writing. That is why, as a copy reader, you have to be a master of a language. Is that clear? You have to learn. You should apply the things that you learned back when you were elementary and junior high school and senior high school. And these things, spelling, grammar, and usage, had been tackled already back when you were in lower grades, right? So I guess you're very much mindful about these things. These are basic things or basic concepts of language. Next, we should also ensure the copies conform with the house style. When we speak of a particular house style, we mean of Chicago man's manual style or APA manual style. So when we speak of style sheets or house style, these are the standards. Standards of writing in a particular publication. How to, when to use abbreviation or what kind of abbreviation will you use. How to use acronyms, how to use other punctuation marks, and what would be your format. Example. Uh, in some newspapers, they use PH, capital P and capital H, as the acronym for Philippines. In some newspapers, they use PHL, capital P, lowercase h, and L for the abbreviation for Philippines. So whatever would be the abbreviation or acronym for Philippines, uh, both are still correct. Is that clear? Because uh, it depends on the house style of a particular newspaper. Try to notice, try to read news articles from Manila Bulletin or Philippine Star, Philippine Daily Inquirer, and then you will be able to uh, notice and compare their house styles as well. Next, duty of a copy reader, they check copies for missing or inaccurate details. That is why a copy reader should always be updated about the different, about different facts that would appear in any news articles the names of a person their his designation uh the numbers that year the dates all of those details should be mastered by a copy reader next they tighten stories as necessary tighten in the sense that you will make it more efficient you would uh be particular with your word choice and you would be able to effectively deliver a particular report or news. And last task would be you have to write headlines. And later, we'll be learning how to write an effective headline following a particular format. Now, 
Next would be the copy reader's concerns and symbols. So these are the common symbols or copy editing symbols that you may use whenever you are editing. And these are basic things. The first column is a task or name of a, per, a, a, name of a symbol or function of a particular symbol. In the second column, it has something to do with how we're going to use the symbols, the red color symbol the red colored symbols there are the symbols that you have to use whenever you're editing and the third column uh, tackles about the result of a particular phrase or word once you edited it now these are the other symbols children that you have to be mindful of capitalization or uppercase lowercase capitals abbreviate and other things the symbols as well other symbols will be how to fill a paragraph and how to insert a period so whenever you whenever you feel that the paragraph is irrelevant, you have to box it and then mark X, then right kill below, then insert period, period then insert. Period. Next will be the copy reader's concerns. Uh, these are the things that you have to edit already. Is that clear? First, grammar and what grammar is composed of subject verb agreement, pronoun antecedent agreement, tenses of the verbs, gerunds, infinitives, participles, and other parts of speech. So you have I believe that you had mastered these grammar concepts already because these are no longer new to you because you had tackled this in English or in Filipino back when you were in elementary and high school. Spelling as well, the confusion uh, between double letter word or single letter word, the silent letters, punctuation marks, facts, capitalization, redundancies and wordiness, opinionated statements, and unnecessary words. Now, let's try to apply the symbols. I have here a particular lead or paragraph, and obviously, it is incorrect. Let's try to edit this, focusing on grammar only. Like what I've said, grammar focuses on subject-verb agreement, precedent agreement, parts of speech, verbals, and other concepts of grammar. So let's try to edit this. So as you can see, it's very obvious. Some mistakes here are very obvious, right? So that's it. Next. Okay. So these are the mistakes in grammar, and these are the symbols. Uh, this is the way on how we use these symbols. Is that clear? Next, how about focusing on spelling? So what symbols can we use? Close up. Okay, Re when we replace a particular letter. This one, children, with the word criminal, whenever a word has double letters and it's supposed to be single you have to uh, delete the second excess letter and then if the letter deleted is within the word definitely a space will be left that is why you have to use another symbol which is close up so that uh, you may fill in that space. Next as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the transpose. How to insert letters. And that's it. So this is how we edit this uh, example. How about punctuations? So that's it. How to insert comma. How to delete excess punctuation mark and how to insert apostrophe. And that's it. How about facts? When it's of facts, uh, identifying facts has something to do with the latest information, the names of a person, the dates, numbers, and other stuff. So let's try to edit this. So that's how we edit facts. Is that clear? So I hope you are very mindful about the symbols that you may use. Next, capitalization. So keep in mind that whenever we capitalize a particular letter or words, you have to use 
three lines below the letter. If you want to place it in lowercase, just use the diagonal symbol. Let's have this example. Of course, we capitalize this. Philippines, Chinese, China. And I guess we know already uh, the things that we need to capitalize, right? Especially with proper nouns, with the first letter of a first word in a sentence, or any letter after a period, or question mark or exclamation point. So we place this in lowercase. And that's it. How about editorializing or one's own value judgment? When we speak of editorializing, we keep on using irrelevant adjectives. So let's try to edit this. Yeah, we delete amazing. Respected as well. In Filipino, mabagal na website. So these are the things that made this article quite editorialized, right? So we need to delete or remove some uh, irrelevant adjectives. So these are the list of redundancies and wordiness. We have the long version and the short version. Of course, whenever we're correcting redundancies and wordiness, we have to change the long version into a short version. Is that clear? So that uh, we will be able to be mindful about. So these are not the only redundancies or wordiness that you may uh, be able to uh, encounter in a particular newspaper. You could still search from the internet some list of uh, word expressions. And of course, you have to edit them using the short versions. Next, unnecessary words. You have to remove these unnecessary words, really, very, and actually. However, if these unnecessary words are enclosed in a quotation mark, meaning to say it's a direct statement or direct speech coming from the source, so it's fine because uh, it, it only means that these unnecessary words were used directly by the speaker in your uh, article. No? Now, at this point, let's try this. You may edit this one in your uh, at home or you may edit this one in your own device or maybe perhaps you may write this one using the following symbols please edit this one you may take a screenshot you may print it out or you may perhaps edit let's have a very simple exercise okay now in this case you will already apply all the things that you need to edit and of course you need to apply appropriate symbols So I guess you're done already. You may perhaps submit your answer to your facilitator, okay? Let's now proceed to the second part of our discussion. It is something to do with headline writing. We all know when you speak of headline, it's the title of any article. Again, uh, any article. Headline is, only not, is not only limited in news articles, but feature editorial, sports science, all of them, uh, all of them have their own headlines and definitely the headline that i'll be teaching you would be the headline used for news articles because in some uh, categories or in some sections of your newspaper using or writing headlines may vary now what are the qualities of a good headline i have here a sample article or lead perhaps first two paragraphs of a particular article Party LP presidential candidate Manuel Maro as the second has assailed Vice President Jeju Marvinay for saying that there might be cheating in the 2016 polls for implying that administration bets would violate the law on election spending. Ross claimed be nice, just trying to divert attention away from the corruption allegations against him. Now, let's try to find out which is the best headline of the following choices. Is it letter A, Rojas hits B9? Over electoral fraud claims. Letter B, Mar assails VP B9. Letter C, B9 slammed by Mar for cheating in 2016 polls. Or B9 tries to divert attention to Mar. Okay, I'll be giving us five seconds to choose. 
the best headline among the choices. Best headline for this uh, article. Okay, maybe most of you would certainly agree that the best headline for this article is letter A. No, Rojas beats Hinoy over electoral fraud claims. Why? Uh, you might say at first that letter B might be the answer. Mar Azil's BPB9. It is short. The keywords are there. There is a verb. However, the information is incomplete. Keep in mind that one quality of a good headline is that it should have complete pieces of information. So in letter B, Mar assails VPB9. Why? Now, why did Mar assail VPB9? And that's the thing that wasn't answered in this headline. And aside from that, it just repeated the verb from the lead. In some cases, children, whenever we are writing a headline we don't usually repeat or use the same verb in the lead but instead we use a shorter or equivalent version for it for heading vocabulary so letter b is not the most appropriate headline how about letter c b is land by mar for cheating in 2016 polls uh we have here the persons involved b nai and mar we also have the y However, it is not as effective as we used to be because it is quite long. And aside from that, it is in passive voice. Remember, a good headline, an effective headline, would use active voice form of the verb. In this case, letter C, it is in passive voice. Why? Because slam there is not past tense, but past participle. It followed by, it's followed by the by, which is the doer of it shows the doer of the action or the by phrase. So letter C is somehow correct, but it's not appropriate because a more effective headline should be an active voice, not in passive voice. How about letter D? Binay tries to divert attention more. It is a quotation headline, sample quotation headline. However, again, just like in letter B, the information here is not sufficient. It lacks some element of why or reason that is why letter a is the correct answer why we do have the persons involved rojas in binai we also use the verb hits a shorter version for assail because hits uh, is a is a headline vocabulary which means compose assailed or say something bad against someone and then of course it has the phrase or preposition phrase over electoral fraud names which answer the question why so that's the good thing about this headline, it's complete, it is precise, it's specific, and it, use, it uses head and vocabulary. Is that clear? So, remember, in addition to what I have mentioned, what, one quality of a good headline is that it attracts the reader's attention. See, it should be catchy. Next, it summarizes the whole story. Just like what I've said, all pieces of information should be there. It helps the reader index the content of the page. In that way, we'll be able to identify which page would this headline be. And of course, depicts the mood of a story. You would easily identify whether the story or whether the story is good or bad or uh, dramatic just based on the headline. And of course, helps set the tone of the newspaper, whether it's serious or whether it's light. No. Now, keep in mind as well that the general principles of headline that every writer must follow. First, accuracy. Headlines must give accurate information about the gist of the story. It should be free from errors or mistakes with regard to the number, with regard to the word choice, and with regard to the names of a person. Logic, headlines of themselves should make sense. You should have to be particular about the level of importance. Is that clear? So meaning to say, whatever the word or whatever the first word in your headline, 
should be the most important because the arrangement should be from the most important to the least important word anyway i'm not saying that you have to include least important words of course all words in headline are important but you have to identify the level of importance specificity a headline should be as specific as possible in presenting information to the reader you should not go around the bush and you should you should direct to the point should be specific uh, you should learn to simplify things as well. Is that clear? And word precision, saying exactly what we mean to say. So words should be precise, and you have to be careful about your word choice. That is why heading vocabulary would be a good help. Now, heading format, based on the things that I had read before, and based on, of course, my, that, my training experience, I had come up with this kind of heading format. And I guess this is very much familiar about these things because I just base the format from the things that I had read before. Now, the common format, subject, verb, and object. Of course, it's very simple, right? It's very simple to understand. Always remember the verb should be in present tense whenever it's an active voice, and then in passive voice, it should be in past participle. And then when you speak of the object, the receiver of the action. Example, Israel begins deporting overstaying Filipinos. Israel is a subject, the verb is begins, and of course, the object, in this headline would be deporting overstaying Filipinos. In Philippine, yeah, I have here a Filipino version. Two Sri Lankan suicide bombers nakapuslit sa Pilipinas. So the subject here is two Sri Lankan suicide bombers. The verb is nakapuslit and the object is sa Pinas. Another format that I had noticed uh, for your headline to be more effective would be this one, the, ad the addition of why or the reason, right? Subject, verb, object, plus y. Example, Duterte orders PCO lottery's closure over massive corruption. The subject here is Duterte. The verb is orders. The object is PCO, PCSO lottery's closure. And then the y, over massive corruption. So it answers the question why already because of the prepositional phrase over massive corruption. This is the reason why lotteries were ordered to close. So this is another format for head and for it to become more informative and effective. In Filipino, you have here an example Philippine headline. PNP na is papasukin sa PUP dahil sa pagkawala ng ilang sujante. So this is how we use uh, this format using Filipino. Is that clear? We have the why. The subject here is PNP. The verb is nais, and the object is papasukin sa PUP. Then the Y dahil sa pagkawala ng ilang sudyante. Now, I do have here some three types of headline. Headlines are divided into three types, such as active, passive, and quotation. Uh, active, examples, SC affirms Imelda Quital in dollar salting cases. To Sri Lankan suicide bombers, ang sa Pinas. So these are examples of active voice form of headline. Why? Because the subject is a doer of the action. And aside from that, the verb is in present tense. Except for Filipino, which is very common that we usually use past tense form of the verb, whether active or passive. But in English, we usually use or we use uh, present tense form of the verb. It is active. When do we use active voice form of headline? We usually use this uh, whenever we denote action or whenever we want to imply action aside from that the doer of the action is very important gets and most headlines for using voice how about passive voice when speak passive voice we just follow the format uh the subject plus the past participle form of the verb examples on students commended the subject here is on students and the passive voice form of the verb or the past participle form of the verb is commended. It is not past tense because the common format of passive voice would be subject plus linking verb is are was were be been being plus the past participle form of the verb. However, in writing a headline, we, we should not use any linking verbs or be verbs. That's why we need to omit it and then just use the past participle form of the verb to show that the subject receives the action. In Filipino, kam krame papaupahan ni Duterte. So that's it. When do we usually use passive voice? Most especially, we use passive voice if the receiver of the action is important. And aside from that, 
And aside from that, uh, we commonly use passive voice whenever there would be accident story or police stories because the victims who receive the actions are more important than the doer of the action or the accident. So that's it. So passive voice, we commonly use this if the receiver of the action is important and if uh, the news is a police story or accident story. Last one, quotation headlines. Example, Lenny Robredo to Duterte. We need leadership unity. Second, police, okay to manggap na regalo, digong. As you can see, children, there are two formats in doing quotation headline. First, the speaker, then followed by a colon, then his shortened speech. Or it could be shortened speech, then the dash or M dash, then the speaker. So any of the two will be okay. Is that clear? Will be uh, appropriate form of quotation headline. Uh, when do we use quotation headline? Keep in mind, children, we use quotation headline for if the statement of the speaker is striking or relevant. And remember that whenever we place the shortened statement, it should be short. The gist of his speech should be there. It should not be the whole quotation or whole speech of a person. But it's a, you need to simplify it so that it will become more striking and effective. Is that clear? Second, aside from the striking statement, we usually use quotation for announcements. For example, class suspensions, right? Uh, whenever Malacanang declares class suspensions, we usually use quotation headline. And third, survey news, of course. Uh, if, for example, if Pulse Asia or SWS or any other uh independent survey company would conduct their survey of course we we have there the source of the survey could be pulse asia then colon and then afterwards the result of their survey most of the time we use quotation headline whenever we want to share the result of a survey is that clear so uh, for you to be an effective headline writer you have to be mindful about the use of any of these uh types of headlines. Now, let's try to learn now to apply our learning. How Let's try to identify the type of headline the following items. Number one, Marshall O'Reilly's Peaceful NCRPO. What type of headline is this? Yes, you're correct. It's quotation headline. Next, number two, Benigno Aquino the third slams, one points and release, revision of martial law. Okay, number two is an example of active voice or active headline. Number three, tropical depression to affect northern zone. Number three, still active voice form of a headline. Number four, Delima, hiling mabisita ang may sakit na ina. Okay, it's, it, it is still in active voice. DFA, magsasampan ng diplomatic protest versus China. Definitely, it's still an active voice form of headline. And number six, China sa Pinas, recruiter sa illegal Chinese parusahan. Well, it's very obvious that it is in quotation headline. So here are some tips on how to write good headlines. First, headlines should be based on the main idea of the story, which should be found in the lead or introduction. And most of the time, we get the headline from the lead. Second, if facts are not in the story, do not use them in headline. Always remember, your headline should be in line with your with the contents of the article. It should not be mismatched. Third, avoid repetition. Remember, children, do not use the same words in the headline twice. Avoid repetition of words in the headline. Avoid ambiguity, insinuation, and double meanings. Avoid using double meaning words. If a story qualifies a statement, the headline should also. Headline writers should understand the story completely before they write the headline. Next, use present tense verbs for headlines that refer to past or present events. And like what I've said a while ago, we use, we use present tense form of the verb in active voice of headline. For the future tenses, or future tense, use the infinitive form of the verb, such as to go 
or to run rather than the verb will. Just like example a while ago, right? To affect. So instead of saying will affect, you have to use the infinitive form. To be verbs such as is, are, was, and were should be omitted, most especially in a passive voice. Right? Headlines in active voice, man bites dog instead of dog is beaten by a man. Do not use articles a, an, and the. These take up space that could be put to better use in forming the reader. Next, do not use the conjunction n. Instead, use comma or semicolon instead. Uh, personalize where you can. Avoid he, she, or they. Attribution is best shown with the words says, but is often shown with a colon instead. Avoid using unclear or little known names, phrases, and abbreviations in headlines. Make sure that make sure to use common abbreviations. Use punctuation sparingly. And do not use period at the end of the headline. Uh, we don't usually place an end mark punctuation or end punctuation mark in the last part of the headline. Use single quotation marks instead of double quotation marks. Drop end punctuation. Like what I've said, avoid using period question mark or summation point. Never begin a headline with a verb because an, a headline should not be an imperative sentence or you should not command the reader. Never split names between lines of a headline. If you are you will be using two-line headline, do not separate the names. Headlines should be complete sentence or should imply complete sentences. When a linking verb is used, it can be implied rather than spelled out. Do not use pronouns alone and, and unidentified. Only well-known abbreviations should be used. Do not abbreviate days of a week and months unless followed by a date. In a multi Multi-line headline, a noun and its modifier should be on the same line. So those are the tips on how to write good headlines. And let's try to improve now the following headlines. First, Republic of the Philippines top two science fields. What could be your answer? Okay. PHL taps two science fields. So this could be... The most improved headline for this headline. Number two, two cabinet secretary faced graph investigation. How are we going to improve this? Okay. Correct answer, two cabinet members face graph probe. Because probe is the hidden vocabulary for investigation. Next, number three, the Senate will investigate the Department of Education's poor performance. Are we going to correct or improve this headline? Okay, Senate to probe debt its poor performance. Number four, Palace of Malacanang, defecating incident in Boracay Beach is offensive. Tourists may face cases. So how are we going to improve this? It's quite a long headline, no? How are we going to try to shorten it? Okay. Palas, pooping incident in Boracay, offensive tourists may face raps. And that's it. This is for English. How about in Filipino? Are you seeing the mga sumusunod na ulo ng balita? Number one. Mataas, water level sa mga dam, tumaas na sa wakas. So how are we going to improve this? Water level sa mga dam tumaas. Number two, investigation sa dating president ng UCPB hiningi, hiningi, hiningi. So how are we going to correct this? Probe sa ex-UCPB presi hiningi or hiningi. Is that clear? Hiningi. Number three, National College Athletic Association Games cancelado na naman. NCAA Games cancelado uli. And last one, si Pulong at 12 pa, dumipat sa NUP. Pulong, 12 pa, dumipat sa NUP. That's it. So in addition, children, here are other steps in writing headline. First, make sure that you had understand, you had understood rather what this story is all about. Find the action verb and most important noun, which tell what is happening in the story. Sum up the story with keywords. Build the summary around the verb. 
you have chosen, cast the summary in sentence, shorten the sentence by putting it in heading form. And once the first draft of the heading is written, find synonyms or keywords in the lead and begin substitution as necessary. So I have here a sample article. I just try to identify the correct headline. The House of Representatives will look into the killing of three former Abu Sayyaf bandits in a law enforcement operation in the Zealand in August 2. The three had surrendered the government. They turned their back on banditry to live normal lives as citizens. They were trying to convince their former colleagues to do likewise at the time of their census death. Basin Representative Mujib Hataman, who saw the inquiry, said. Okay. Let's choose among the following letter A, House of Rep, to look into the killing of Abu Sayyaf surrenderies. Letter B, three surrenderies of the government. C, House to Probe Slay of Abu Sayyaf surrenderies. Or letter D, Abu Sayyaf Investigation of the House of Representatives. Which do you think? is the most appropriate headline. Okay. So it's very obvious that is letter C, House to Probe Slay of Abu Sayyaf Surrenderies because first, it is simplified because it used house. Aside from that, it also uses hidden vocabulary such as probe for investigation. And of course, slay is another uh, head and vocabulary for killing. So letter C is the most appropriate and effective headline. Yeah. How about in Filipino? Tiniyak ni Senate Minority Leader Franklin Dirolo na may sapat na protection ang ipatutupad na National Identification System Act. Ayon kay Dirolo, ang pangunahing author ng panukala, walang dapat ipag-aala ang mga men dahil may protection sa kanilang privacy at mas mapap mapapabilis pang pagbibigay ng serbisyo publiko. Ano sa tingin nyo ang pinaka-efektibong headline para sa artikulong ito? Letter A, Sentiment Minority Leader Franklin Dinon, Tiniyak ang Protection National Identification System Act. Privacy sa National ID, Tiniyak. Sen Senado, nanawagan ng tiyak ng protection sa National ID. O Drilon, titiyakin ko ang seguridad sa National ID system. Ano sa tingin nyo ang pinaka-efektibong headline para rito? Okay, letter B, privacy sa national ID tiniyak. Bakit? Una, may ikse. Ikalawa, lahat ng mga salita ay applicable sa article. Tumutukoy siya. At yung verb niya tiniyak ay related siya sa konteksto o sa mensahe ng artikulo. So hindi natin kailangan ilagay yung Senate Minority Leader kasi una sa lahat, siya may nag-represent ng buong Senado. So, letter B is the correct answer. So, yeah, po. So, here are the other terms that you have to learn in headline writing. Down style or up style. These terms refer to capitalization in headlines or heads. Down style heads are treated like sentences with only the first word and proper nouns capitalized. Just like the example, this is a down style. How about up style? Heads. Upstyle heads capitalize first letter of all major words or all capital letters in heads is also called upstyle. Example, this is an upstyle, yung nasa taas at yung sa baba, yung all caps. So upstyle siya kapag capital letter. Po. Next, kicker, a label head above the main head, typically up to five words. And then, this is a kicker, flash left, centered. So these are the things that you have to keep in mind. Slugs as well. Then points, we have the columns as well. Sa broadsheet, 6 to 7 columns. Sa magazine or tabloid, 4 to 5. Kasi mas mali na siya. Headline count as well. Count or length in units headlines. How do we usually create a slug line? This is the format. We have the news, Duterte vows, and then how we're going to use this type of article. The first line. The second would be the shortened headline. The third would be the dates in which you edited it or in which the article had been written. The writer's initial, A or M, B, there stands for my initial, Alan Ray Belsario. But if you're the writer of particular news, you may use your initial. And of course, the page number. If it is a national news, pages one and two will be appropriate. If it's 
simple news, local news, or police story could be three, four, and five. How about the printer's direction? We usually use this format. PNR is the on style of the headline. Remember, printer's direction is for the headline, of course, form of the article. 48 points is the font size of the headline. Two columns is the column in which the headline will con be consumed. 25 M's pertain about the size of a column. One column in high school is 12, while in elementary is 11. Now, two columns, 12 plus 12 is equal to 24. Plus one, yung gitna o yung kanal sa bawat column, yung space na yon ay 1 M. So, kaya siya naging 25. 12 plus 12 plus 1. So, 25 M's. Kung tatlo siya, 12 plus 12 plus 12 is 36. Plus 2 kasi may dalawang uh, space provided sa mga columns na yun. So, magiging 38 columns siya. And then, one deck or one line headline. 11 points, font size ang lead. 10 points, font size ang body text or yung paragraph after ng lead. Columns, ilan ang kanya masasakop. At down style, I mentioned that already. And 30 unit counts. So, paano natin kinukuha yung 30 unit counts? Ito yung kanyang uh, count for letters or figures. Please, you may read this or you may perhaps memorize this thing so that you may be able to know the unit count. Before, uh, unit count is very useful. But nowadays, we don't usually use it anymore because of other demands or because we don't uh, usually use this anymore because you could already adjust a particular uh, article or headline nowadays using editing software. Is that clear? So, do you still have any questions? If you have any questions, feel free to post it in the comment box or you may uh, email the organizers of this uh, webinar. So, with regard to your exercise, I'll be providing a particular exercise. I'll be giving the exercise or uh, things to do to your facilitators or organizer of this webinar so that you will be guided on how to, uh, you will be guided on how to apply all the things that you learn. Is that clear? Also, I'll be providing some uh, PowerPoint presentations for you. Now, in passing, allow me to share to you something about these things. Laging tatandaan, walang mahirap sa taong nagsisikap. At parang sa copy reading din. Mahirap sa simula, pero habang tumatagal, yung hihirap na yun ay natututunan mo rin dahil nagsisikap ka. Aside from that, walang matatamo ang taong nagreklamo. Kung una, lagi tayo nagreklamo sa mga ginagawa natin, syempre, uh, hindi na mahihinto nun ang ating pagkatuto. Kaya dapat natin tandaan, mga bata, ay sa copy reading ha, I'm pertain to copy reading, obey first before you complain. Laging maging biyaya sa kapwa. Yan lagi natin tatandaan, lagi tayong tumulong sa lahat ng mga ginagawa natin. At syempre, enjoy lang copy reading in head and writing. Kasi wala namang mag-enjoy dito kung hindi tayo lang. Mag-enjoy tayo mag-edit dahil kapag nag-edit tayo, natututo rin tayo ng improve din tayo most especially their communication skills. With that, I would like to thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you learned something so that you may be able to uh, share it as well to your other uh, friends or classmates. Pag nagbalik na ang ating face-to-face -face, uh, class or perhaps by the time that press conference will be implemented once again i hope we'll be able to meet and i hope we'll be able to share our insights always remember that journal uh, th that this pandemic should not stop our passion for campus journalism journalism should always continue most especially nowadays that we're experiencing this kind of pandemic lots of pieces of information are spreading all throughout most especially in social media that is why you should be 
we have to be critical in analyzing some posts in social media, some pieces of information that we might encounter. We should always be mindful. We have to be critical and we should not be so gullible right away. We should not believe in everything that we are reading. Try to uh, try to research, try to read lots of resources. In that way, you may be able to find out the truth behind all those lies. <laughs> that clear? So with that, thank you very much for sharing my time, for sharing your time with me.